Check out that buff dude over there with the orange skin. He's been chilling on Mars for a hot minute, which is why he looks like he used the wrong shade of self-tan. You see, all those carotenoids and carrots, sweet potatoes, bell peppers, tomatoes, and pumpkins are protecting him from those UV rays. The more he eats, the more orange he gets. And as for his sturdiness, it's all about that Martian gravity. The gravity here makes us perceive our weight differently. And if you want to be a boss on Mars, you gotta eat heavily. Like, if a person weighs 150 pounds on Earth, it feels like no more than 55 pounds on Mars. So, overeating can help shorten that gravity to weight gap. Mercury is a whole different thing. It's hotter than Georgia asphalt during the day, but colder than Elsa's castle at night. You gotta be made of metal with a high melting point to be able to survive here. But for us regular humans, we'd be toast. Literally. Even though Mercury is the closest planet to the Sun, Venus is still the hottest one. Life on Venus, more like life on the Sun's evil twin. The temperature here typically hovers around 870 degrees Fahrenheit on average. Surviving at the boiling point of water, or in the extreme heat of Venus, is a challenge for most earthly species. Only a select few can endure boiling hot temperatures. Others rush to Starbucks to grab an iced latte with the first beams of the spring sun. So no human being can really evolve enough to survive on Venus. The only creatures that could thrive there are probably tardigrades and those weirdos who put hot sauce on everything. You wonder what tardigrades are? Well, those are minuscule and adorable caterpillar-like creatures that possess remarkable durability. They can endure boiling water, the depths of a sea trench, and the frigid, lightless void of space. Recently, tardigrades were included in a scientific study aboard a spacecraft that unfortunately crashed on the moon. Scientists speculate that the tardigrades may have survived the impact. Hey, would you like to turn into this creature and live on Venus? We're done with terrestrial planets. Let's move on to gas giants. Now look at this dude from Saturn. He's got flippers and not arms. He's got small holes with no external ear flaps instead of regular ears. Most of this gas giant is colder than your ex's heart, as the temperature is about minus 220 F. You can't walk on it, but you can turn into a snowball or an ice crystal if you're feeling frisky. Things are quite similar on Jupiter, so probably turning into a seal and chilling there is not that bad of an idea. At least you can live there rent-free. And don't even get me started on Neptune and Uranus. These guys are ice giants with no solid surface, so those sharp-clawed dudes you see in movies? Yeah, they don't exist. Plus, these two ain't exactly hospitable to life. I'll stick to my sweet potatoes on Mars. Thank you very much. There are many different conditions on other planets and moons that could affect how your pet would evolve there. Take gravity, for example. On a bigger or denser planet, gravity would be higher, meaning that life would evolve to be shorter, sturdier, and perhaps with multiple limbs for structural support. On a lighter planet with weaker gravity, life could hop, soar, and glide more easily, and would be more likely to evolve a lighter, taller build. Mars is the fourth planet from the Sun, a dusty, cold, desert world. Mars is also a dynamic planet with seasons, polar ice caps, canyons, extinct volcanoes, and evidence that it was even more active in the past. Gravity on Mars is lower than on Earth, and it's farther from the Sun, so we would see less sunlight. Mars also has no protective magnetic field due to its thin atmosphere, exposing everything to radiation. Sometimes, strong winds create dust storms that howl around the whole planet, and the dust continues to settle for months after. Your pet dog on Mars would probably have a taller, robust build to compensate for poor gravity, and would have bigger eyes to better perceive the far-off sun. To protect itself from radiation, your dog would have to switch its pigmentation from melanin to carotenoids, which give carrots, tomatoes, and oranges their color. So the dog would probably have orange skin. Since Mars has weak gravity, your cat would probably be lighter and would jump more to get around the place. It would also have longer legs. Jupiter is called a gas giant. The planet is covered in thick red, brown, yellow, and white clouds. The clouds make the planet look like it has stripes. Living on the surface of Jupiter might prove to be challenging. Since there's no actual surface, the planet consists entirely of gas, but it doesn't mean it's just a giant cloud hanging in space. If you venture through its atmosphere to deeper parts, the gas becomes denser until it turns into liquid. So one layer of Jupiter is an ocean made of hydrogen instead of water. With high pressure, extreme temperatures, and a fluid environment, 
we'll have to draw some inspiration from deep water dwellers who deal with the same conditions but on a smaller scale. Your cats and dogs would be big isopods with shells to protect them from Jupiter's radiation. Like its fellow gaseous neighbor Jupiter, Saturn is a gargantuan cloud of hydrogen and helium with no solid land and powerful winds. Like Jupiter, it gets tighter within, but its core is much smaller. Its iconic rings are made of a myriad of ice particles, so nothing could live on them, unfortunately. Saturn's volume is greater than 760 Earths, and it's the second most massive planet in the solar system, about 95 times Earth's mass. Saturn's average density is less than water, so this behemoth of a planet could float in a bathtub if there were one of a suitable size. The only way to move within Saturn's thick fog is by flopping around like a jellyfish. Your dog would probably have an umbrella-shaped bell to propel itself up and no skeleton so that it wouldn't be crushed by the pressure. Your cat would have jellyfish tentacles to move around. Life is tough on Mercury. This tiny planet is closest to the sun, so the sunlight here is seven times more powerful than on Earth. No sunscreen would be able to manage that. Mercury is about two-fifths the size of Earth, with a similar gravity to Mars, or about 38% of Earth's gravity. This means that you could jump three times as high on Mercury, and heavy objects would be easier to pick up. Mercury's temperature is extreme, swinging between a scorching 800 degrees Fahrenheit during the day and negative 290 degrees Fahrenheit at night. It's all accompanied by constant meteor showers and quakes. As a bonus, there is a very thin atmosphere and no air to breathe. Flesh and bone could never handle these severe conditions. So instead, your pets here would be made of something similar to refractory metal, like titanium. There'd be no need for a respiratory system, so their pretty metal faces would be without a nose. And their eyes would probably look like thick sunglasses to protect them from all this sun exposure. If there's anywhere harder to live than on Mercury, it's Venus. Venus is the second planet from the Sun and is Earth's closest neighbor in the solar system. Venus is the brightest object in the sky after the Sun and the Moon and sometimes looks like a bright star in the morning or evening sky. The temperature here is a whopping 880 degrees Fahrenheit and the atmosphere is so thick it creates a greenhouse effect. The surface is dry and full of surprises like volcanic eruptions, hurricane winds, and lightning. And, as a cherry on top, the pressure here feels like you're one mile underwater, giving you a never-ending headache. It would be hard to imagine your pet living on Venus. The only things that could possibly survive there are anaerobic bacteria. Venus eats away at everything, even metal, making quick work of any human spacecraft. And Venus's atmosphere contains phosphine, which is toxic for anything that breathes oxygen, but means life for microbes. Icy, dark, and plagued by strong winds, Uranus and Neptune are mostly made of cold liquids, methane, water, and ammonia. Methane makes Uranus blue, and it has faint rings, while Neptune is dark, cold, and very windy, as it's the last of the planets in our solar system. It's more than 30 times as far from the Sun as Earth is. Neither of them has a solid surface, and their atmospheres slowly merge into the water around the planet's core. To boot, gravity on Neptune is stronger than on Earth and applies more pressure on everything. With such powerful gravity, your dog would be shorter and your cat would be stockier with muscular bodies and thicker skins against the cold. And considering the fluid environment, your pet's best bet is to become like a cosmic whale or manatee floating around the blue planets. Pluto is not very big. It's only half as wide as the United States. Pluto is smaller than Earth's moon this dwarf planet takes 248 Earth years to go around the Sun. If you lived on Pluto, you would have to wait 248 Earth years to celebrate your first birthday. One day on Pluto is about six and a half days on Earth. The farthest planet-like object from the Sun is appropriately freezing cold and covered with ice, with weak gravity and a flimsy atmosphere. The Sun, from Pluto, is nothing more than a dot on the horizon, much like the Moon for Earth, so there's not much going on in terms of light. But scientists suggest that there may be a water ocean under Pluto's surface and some nicer weather. Let's take notes from Earth's creatures with built-in antifreeze, like some insects and fish. Low gravity makes the muscles and bones shrink and the space between vertebrae expand, making your pets taller. 
their posture would also change, since their spine, for the most part, would be out of a job. So they'd probably be tall, thin, and somewhat spider-like, with spindly limbs and a curved spine. On other planets beyond the solar system, the boundaries between plants and your pets could be blurred, and your pets might merge with plant life. Your pets might become tree-like, with beating hearts attached to their bodies, or with feet to move to better positions as they compete for light and water. You could also have a rabbit that spends most of its time staying still, photosynthesizing, and only running away if threatened. Or a massive dinosaur-like horse that splays itself out on the ground to get nutrients directly from the soil and obtains extra energy with the help of plants on its back. Cooperation could lead to some fascinating pets, such as a sea of amoeba, acting as a single jelly-like mega-creature, thousands of voracious shrimp-like carnivores forming a single organism that devours anything in its way, or a web of intertwined trees that collect water in wide pitchers at the top of their canopies. Getting oxygen to muscles is a key for your pet's endurance. Here on Earth, octopuses use a copper-based molecule in their blood to shuttle oxygen, making them more sluggish than mammals and birds that use iron-based hemoglobin. Scientists have speculated about other types of oxygen transport that could make animals fitter. In atmospheres with more oxygen, we might see a pet monkey that can fly without ever having to stop for a rest. On cold planets and moons without much sunlight, such as the moons of Saturn and Jupiter, your pet dog might have to get by with chemical energy rather than take it from the sun. Also, in worlds without light, such as the depths of Enceladus's oceans, there might be little need to evolve eyes. Pets would probably sense their environments using other means, like gills and vibration sensors. Five feet with the Earth's gravity. Verification complete. Now the simulation room will recreate Mercury. Ah, uh, it, it's so hot in here. Yes, it's like standing next to a volcano. Your jump is four feet high. Now switch to Venus. Wow, this place looks scary. On the real Venus, everything is toxic. I feel no difference. Yes, the gravity here is almost the same as on Earth. Switch to the moon. Gravity on the moon is 10 times lighter than Earth's. 9 feet. The next one is Mars. Huh? It's pretty comfortable here. The gravity here is the same as on Mercury. 4 feet. Now, prepare for the struggle. Huh? What do you... There is no solid surface on Jupiter. Although Jupiter is a great deal larger in size, its surface gravity is just 2.4 times that of the surface gravity of Earth. Ugh, it's hard to even stand here. Only half a foot. Got it. Switch to Saturn. There is no solid surface here either. But Saturn's gravity is almost the same as Earth's. Now Uranus. Ugh, it's so cold. It's five times warmer here than on the real Uranus. Seriously? Ah, my legs 1. are... 1.7 feet. Gravity is slightly weaker than Earth's. That's Neptune for you. Your jumps are 1.3 feet high. Gravity is slightly stronger than Earth's. Get me out of here. Turn off the simulation. Well, here's some facts you'll find hard to digest. <laughs> Your stomach has a pretty incredible capacity. Being able to hold up to half a gallon of liquids, that's a whole large bottle of Coke. It's pretty hard to estimate how much hard food you can eat because it's processed with your teeth before it gets to your stomach. There's definitely not enough room for a turkey, but a good-sized chicken would probably fit in it. If you were asked where your stomach was, you would probably point to your tummy. Sorry, that's wrong. It's actually up here, hidden in between your ribs. Scientists believe that the appendix will disappear eventually. Nobody really knows why we need it, but some researchers claim it might have existed to help our ancestors digest tree bark. 
Because it's no longer part of our daily diet, the appendix isn't necessary and can disappear from our bodies without any consequences. The appendix isn't the only obsolete part of our body. Wisdom teeth aren't that useful either. Yeah, they used to come in handy whenever our ancestors lost some of their teeth, but the only thing they help us lose now is the money we spend extracting them. Almost all of our body is covered with hairs, even if we don't notice them. They grow even in the belly button. Their purpose is to catch lint. Check it out. See? Your liver acts as your own personal bodyguard, protecting you from toxins and many other things you don't want hanging around in your body. It's also pretty indestructible and can even regenerate. Only about 43% of you is actually you. Over 50% of the cells in your body belong to tiny little creatures that mainly live in your gut. Still, even though your own cells are fewer than microbial ones, there are, on average, about 100 trillion of them in you. See? You're not alone. With this in mind, your own genes are less than half of what you really consist of. If you take all the microbes dwelling within your body and count their genes, you'll find between 2 to 20 million. If you sleep, it doesn't mean all of your body sleeps. In fact, sometimes your brain has to work even harder when you're asleep. It needs to process tons of information, and reports usually take a lot of time. The nose definitely gets a good rest while you're sleeping. Amazingly, your sense of smell basically deactivates at night. You wouldn't even be bothered if there was a really terrible smell in your bedroom. No comment. The nose is probably one of the most underappreciated parts of the body. We wouldn't even be able to enjoy eating without it. About 80% of the taste of any food is thanks to the nose and its ability to recognize odors. If you hold your nose while eating, you will taste almost nothing. With no sense of smell, you're likely to recognize food mostly by texture. So an onion might seem no different than a big refreshing apple. Scientists used to believe we could distinguish about 10,000 smells, but they were wrong. Recent research showed that people are actually able to distinguish between more than a trillion smells. We also remember them better than anything else, and smells can even evoke some distant memories. Your nose just doesn't help you breathe and catch odors. It filters the air for sensitive throats and lungs. If we inhale dry air, the nose moistens it, cools it, and heats it if it's necessary. Also, the nose cleans the air of dirt. When you age, your brain is gradually reducing in size. By age 75, it's much smaller than at 30, and it starts shrinking by the age of 40. It happens to everyone and doesn't affect your mental strength in any way. Our brain can store only 7 bits in its short-term memory. Don't even try to compare your brain with a phone capacity, not even the one you had back in 2005. That's why you can't even learn a phone number by heart. Our short-term memory functions just like a chalkboard. You can get some information, but sooner or later, you run out of space. To check your working memory capacity, try this test. Ask a friend to write a list of 10 words and read it to you. Most people recall 7 or fewer items from that list. Your RAM, or working memory, is an essential thing that we need to perform almost any everyday activity including basic conversations, surfing the net, and even petting your dog. Our strongest and emotional memories are often fake. The central memory gives us the confidence to believe that we remember everything, even though most of the details are made up in our heads. Not only your brain shrinks as you get older, you too shrink dramatically. The bones get more brittle, the backbone gets compressed. A similar thing happens when you rest at night. Your bones kind of relax too. Because of this, you wake up taller in the mornings than you are at the end of the day. Among mammals, only humans can walk on two legs for their entire lives. You might think that kangaroos or gorillas move in the same way, but kangaroos use their tail as a third leg, and gorillas use their long arms to keep balance. Your bones take part in metabolism too. Since they mostly consist of calcium, when there's not enough of this element in your blood, bones start shedding it into the bloodstream, balancing your body. The same reaction works in reverse, too. When there's too much calcium in your blood, it goes into the bones to be stored for later. The only bone to have a sense of humor in your body is inside your upper arm. 
That's why it's called the humerus. Okay, I made that one up. Moving along. The only bones that never grow are found in our ears. We can hear thanks to these tiny bones because they have adapted to transmit sound vibrations. Doctors call them the oscular chain. One of these hearing bones, the stapes, is the smallest bone in your entire body. It's no larger than a grain of rice. Our height, shape of our body, and skin color depend a lot on where our ancestors used to live. But we can adapt to new conditions even within our own lifespan. For example, if you move from plains to the mountains, you'll eventually develop more red blood cells to compensate for the lack of oxygen. And naturally, if you move from a colder climate to a hotter and sunnier one, your skin will get darker to adapt. Our lifespan is programmed within ourselves. They constantly renew and divide, but they have a sort of internal timer that stops at some point. Some cells also stop reproducing sooner than others. On average, cells cease dividing when we reach the age of 100. That means if we could find a way to trick ourselves into turning off the timer, we could potentially live forever. Body fat isn't just a nuisance. It acts as insulation material, energy reserve, and shock absorber. Your body sends the most fat into your waist region because that's where your internal organs are. If something happens to you, this layer of fat might protect your vitals from irreparable damage. Heads up! Your skull isn't a single bone. It actually consists of 28 different bones, many of which are fused together to protect your brain. The mandible, or the lower jaw, is the only skull bone that isn't fixed to the bone around it. It's attached with connective tissues and muscles. This is what makes it so mobile. You can move it in any direction you like. You see, the strongest muscles in your body aren't in your arms or legs. They're in your head. The masseter is the main muscle responsible for chewing, and it needs to be the strongest for you to eat normally. And you know those muscles that allow you to move your ears? Those are temporalis, located above your temples. They also help you chew your food. Now, we've got two really fast muscles. They control the eyelid closing. In fact, they're the fastest muscles in our body. Eyes are fragile and need protection, so the reflex that protects them needs to be as fast as lightning. These muscles can shut the eyelids in less than a tenth of a second. People with double-jointed thumbs can bend them backward. It looks super unusual, and very few people can do it. Still, it's totally okay. Even though it looks painful, it actually doesn't hurt at all for someone with a double-jointed thumb. Now, we recognize only purple-blue, green-yellow, and yellow-red colors. Everything else is a combination of these three. It's impossible to calculate how many of these combinations the human eye sees, because every single person has slight vision differences. But it's about 1 million combinations on average. You see?